All right. Welcome back to the final part of my top 35 favorite all new, all different Marvel series. And now we're in the top 10. All right. Now, number 10 is Spider-Man 2099. This is not surprising because I freaking love Peter David's work. And when I get a chance to go see him at Comic-Con this year, I'm taking issues from the previous volume of the series and have him sign it. This series is really great. Um, I don't know why Marvel can just continue the, the previous volume's numbering. And just continue on there. They have that certain number one. But the, I think this volume is only about five issues in. And it's still really good and, and it's enjoyable. And plus, uh, Captain America 29 is in this series. Uh, she, she came in the series from Secret War 2099, which is great. And this definitely gets a re very good recommendation from me. Awesome title. And the same uh, same creative team. Says Peter David. All right, let's get back to This one might be a surprise, but this is above Spider-29. But Starbrand and Nightmask by Greg Wiseman. This series is two issues in, and it's Really awesome. Who knew that two characters created by Jonathan Hickman would have a team-up series together and be written by Greg Wiseman, the guy behind shows like Young Justice, Star Wars. Oh, he was one of the producers on Star Wars Rebels. Uh, he also got Gargoyles, Witches, Spectacular Spider-Man. Really good series. And currently he's writing this series, and he's about to finish up his run on Keenan. And I think, as far as I know, according to this list is concerned, now he did say that that was 12 was going to be the final issue of that series for his, for his uh, that's what his contract extended to. But as far as his list is concerned, 12 was the final issue of the series. But you also have this series, and it's written really well by Greg Wiseman. And here's the thing. This is not this thing along with Keenan is not the first comic book the guy has written. He also co-wrote the Captain Adam series, uh, the one that, that started in the late eighties. He actually co-wrote that series for a good chunk of it. So at least this guy is uh, at least Greg Wiseman is is good at writing both comic books and TV shows. Yep. And basically, in the first issue you had the return of Nitro, the guy who basically start who who lit the spark for the uh, Civil War. The original Civil War that won the Mark Millar and Steve McNiven, I think his name is. Um, that, that was the artist of the thing. Um, who united the, the original Civil War series. And in story, and people know this this very day, he's the one who started Civil War. He's the one who started, he, he's the one who caused the San Francisco, not New Warriors. Still to this very day, Marvel keeps writing in story where, where people are still blaming the New Warriors for causing Civil War. And it was Nitro who did it. It was nice to see Nitro again. It'd been, it'd been a while. I think last time I saw him was when he when excuse me was during Bendis' run on New Avengers. It was nice to see the guy again, and of course Kenny Kong from the Ultimate Universe is in, is in this series. I uh, first showed up in issue two, and Starbright and Nightmask are actually in college. Yes. So basically, overall, you have like four characters. Created by John Hickman, they're still being used. I mean, you have Hyperion, Doctor Spectrum on the on the Squatch and Supreme series. I mean, those versions of them, and of course you got Star Wars Nightmask characters, also created by John Hickman, and they get their own series. And besides being two issues in, like like giving Black Knight is an ongoing series, and give Doctor Strange was only in giving one for Star Wars Nightmask. This was a brilliant stroke of genius, and I'm hoping this how it lasts more than just. 12 issues. I'm really hoping that it has, uh, it has that feeling. I have a pretty good feeling that this title will probably last three, four years tops. I'm also hoping for at least for a six years. I'm hoping for a five year, five or six years tops for Star Brand Night Mask because there's plenty of stories you can tell with these characters. I'm hoping Marvel does not relaunch the title at like. 30 issues. I'm really hoping Marvel does. Marvel needs to stop relaunching series because it's getting old. But this series was this is the original title. All right. Okay, number eight. Uncanny and Humans by Charles Show and Steve McNiven. Now, this series 
is really good. They just wrapped up their first story arc. In the case of this series, this series is kind of unofficially five issues in because you also have issue zero that came out this past May. And basically, this series has been delayed for have been delayed for a while, but but in this series, unlike all new inhumans, which focus on the newer inhumans, Uncanny Avengers is focused on the royal family. With Johnny Storm and the Beast from the X-Men as supporting characters. This is freaking brilliant. And also, Johnny Storm has started a romance with Medusa. Which he kind of did start that when he first met her. Before he started banging his her sister. And then now, now he's back banging uh, Medusa. <laughs> I mean, like, dang. How many women has Johnny Storm been with over the years? I mean, Medusa and Crystal was basically is something else. But, yeah. I mean, awesome series. I highly recommend it. All right. Um, number seven, and people, some people probably, people like Edgar and Tilly will probably be happy to see this on my in my top ten. Extraordinary X Men by Jeff Lemire. Though the series under its second artist right now, but there's no denying if you read the series, it's like classic X. It, it's like reading and Ken, it's like a Kenny X Men originally was, but on, it's like a Kenny X Men but a different name. That's simply how I put it. It's a classic X-Men. And plus you have most of the familiar X-Men part of the series with the exception of Rogue, uh, Gambit, and Kenny Pride. And of course Cyclops and Jean Grey. With the exception of those few characters, you got most you got most of the more familiar characters. And in case you say Wolverine, there is a Wolverine, but it's uh, Old Man Logan. But it's an awesome series. And it's six issues in, and issue seven is coming out really soon. This series, I don't mind keeping at a bi-monthly, uh, where it comes out twice. And this one series, I don't mind, because it's really damn good. And this is a hot, this is a very high recommendation for me, get, trying to get that series. Yep. All right. Number six. Another really good series, and one of Edgar, one, one fan Edgar's favorite series. The Mighty Thor Volume 2. And... Why well, I would say Volume 2 because there was a Mighty Thor series published um, by Matt Fraction um, in 2011. It went from 2011 to 2012. It lasted for a year. And this series, along with this one, is published twice a month. The only difference is Matt Fraction wrote the first volume. This volume was written by Jason Aaron, who who previously also wrote uh, previous wrote the two previous Thor titles, which was first was Thor God Thunder, and then continued as Thor Volume 4, and now it's the Mighty Thor Volume 2. I don't mind that they brought back the Mighty Thor, the name, anyways, but really good series. It's only four issues in, surprisingly, but I would start, when it comes to Jason Aaron's run, uh, the jump on this wing, I would read God Thunder first, because some of the stuff from that series does affect what's going on here now. I mean, if you want to go back further, I would start with JMS's run. Yeah, I would start there, then do, um, and go straight into the Thor Volume 1, and then the Mighty Thor, then Thor God Thunder, then uh, Thor Volume 4, uh, Th uh, Thor God Thunder, Thor Volume 4, and this one. Yeah, this one you have to read like several different series in order to get full grasp what's going on, but it's not very hard to find these, I mean, th th there are trades that collect the previous Thor stuff that's come out in like the last decade, but suffice it to say, but if you want, if, if you're interested just in the theme of Thor, uh, start with the previous Thor of Wine. Now, this particular title, now, the previous Thor of Wine, Thor of Wine 4, lasted for eight issues. This one is only four issues in. And I would not be surprised that sometime next year we could, this time this year we could see issue 700. Who knows? Possibility. Really good series. Um, this one for some people probably be a bit of a surprise because... Like Black Knight, this is kind of an underrated title in some ways. Astonishing Ant-Man by Nick Spencer. A really awesome title that um, that the previous uh, series that, that, that this continues from Ant-Man Volume 2, I own almost all the issues of that. I also own the Ant-Man Annual. Ant -Man, I, I don't own Ant-Man Last Days, but I do own everything from Ant-Man from Ant-Man number one. Uh, pretty much almost all the issues except for issue three of that series. And I don't own Ant-Man Last Days. Now I'm eventually going to soon going to get Astonishing X-Men. Astonishing Ant-Man. 
Now, this is possibly the, like, fourth title to use name Astonishing. Aston I think the reason why they did this is because Astonishing X-Men so really well. And you also had the Astonishing Spider-Man Wolverine series, Astonishing Thor. There was going to be Astonishing Captain America, but that was relaunched as, um... But they changed the name to Captain America and Living Legend. But, yes, but this, but this title is only about, I think it's like five issues in. Though I don't like the fact that in the most recent issue, uh, Cassie is no longer speaking to her father. I don't really like that because she thinks that he was being overprotective. I think eventually Nick Spencer will have what these two will reconcile. And I'm hoping at some point Marvel will allow Nick Spencer to give Cassie Lang back her shrinking powers and have her be Strax again. I wouldn't mind if, if she became her father's sidekick. I mean... It works in DC Comics, where you have Bruce and Damien work together. It works well there. Why can't it work here with Marvel? A father and daughter team fighting crime together. Get on this, Marvel. I mean, for DC, it's a huge hit to do this. I don't know why Marvel doesn't do this. DC's been doing something like this for years, and yet Marvel doesn't even care to try. And plus, Cassie Ling is a popular character. Especially my friend Tivia. Who was who considers Castling one of his favorite characters, and I'm surprised he's not reviewing the Astonishing Ant-Man series, but I don't mind the fact he's in the series. Um, I think I think it's a great idea because that's one thing about Scott Lang that's great about him is his relationship with his daughter. Now, um, here's something but odd though. You see, Scott Lang is not in a relationship with his ex-wife. As a matter of fact, he has never been. In any continent, he's been divorced for years, and he's been in a relationship mainly with uh, Darla During, who was Miss Thing from FF Volume Two, and now he's apparently in a relationship with the female Beetle. Who get this? You, anybody who probably would be laughing at this, the female Beetle that currently exists in the Marvel Universe, her father is t is Spider-Man Tombstone. I am not kidding, and I got a hand at the Tombstone. He has one drop dead gorgeous daughter. And they revealed this in the Superior Foes of Spider Man series that Tombstone is her father. So she's actually one of a few characters who actually their fathers are basically well known supervillains. I mean, you got her, you have Sunger, who's actually a hero. Uh, her father was Lightmaster, who's a C list villain. And you also have, um, I'm trying to think of her name, uh, the Owl's daughter, uh, Jekyll and Pride, I think her name is, yes. Um, these characters are really interesting. And I like the direction that this series is going. And heck, he even has Machine Smith and Grizzly. Now, the Grizzly is an old Spider-Man villain. I'm not kidding. And when, when he and he, uh, Scott Lake first met, he thought he was Eric O'Grady because, because anybody who knows the Grizzly, the last time he showed up before, he showed up in the previous series, uh, that, and the last time he showed up was back during Siege. Now, when this series first started last year, it had been five years since anybody had seen, um, since anybody seen Grizzly. Uh, as for Machine Smith, Machine Smith had not been that long. I think that the last time he was seen was, as of last year, he only been about three years, and I think they had apparently killed him, and now he's back. Oh, and here's something interesting about Machine Smith. He was also once uh, Mr. Fear, and he's gay. I'm not kidding. He's actually one of the very few. Openly gay villains. Though I'm quite happy with the fact he's he's not uh, start hitting on the Grizzly because I think Grizzly's straight. Um, but despite that, Astonishing Ant Man Ant Man is a really good title. Highly recommend it, and definitely recommend you all everybody try it. Though this one, not like the Mighty Thor, where you have to read like also with four other titles to get a good understanding what's going on. This one you just need to read. You have to read Ant Man Second Chances, the Ant Man Annual. Ant-Man Large in Life, and Ant-Man Last Days. Ant-Man Last Days is referenced. I mean, at the end of the most recent issue, they brought back the all-new Giant Man who first showed up in the Ant-Man Annual. Yeah, he showed up in the issue. Now, number four is Captain America Sam Wilson. Especially some people call it Sam Wilson Captain America, but officially, according to the Marvel, they call it Captain America Sam Wilson. This is one really badass series. Um, you have, the series is done by Nick Spencer. Now, I know for a fact Nick Spencer is currently being criticized in this book, for, for this particular book, 
Not for how you write Sam Wilson, but for all the political stuff the book has been doing. Heck, um, I was surprised to hear about this. But apparently, after the first issue came out, uh, people were calling for Nick Spencer to be removed from the book. I'm like, no, what the heck? Why in the world would you want Nick Spencer removed from the book? The book is awesome. And plus, I love the fact that uh, you that Nick Spencer brought back the Serpent Society. I mean, when was the last time anybody saw them? I mean, I think I think last time anybody saw that. I mean, this. I mean, the fully reunited Serpent Society. I mean, yes, Serpent Society's popped up a couple of times. I think last time they officially showed up was Avengers vs X Number Zero, but I don't think they've ever done this full full meeting like the reunited Serpent Society. I don't think since Mark Greenwald's run from Captain America. By the way, I highly recommend his run. It's really awesome. And I know it's weird to see Sam become Cap Wolf. Yeah, that was weird. And I'm kind of glad the fact they finally ended that particular thing. Now, this series is only six issues in. And it's really good. You have Misty Knight as a supporting character. Along with D-Man. Which I'm like, okay. And how the heck is this guy alive? Yes, that was my biggest question when I when I read uh, All New Cath America uh, a little over a year ago. I'm like, how the heck is this guy alive? Last time I saw him, he got killed by Sharon Carter during Brubaker's run. A uh, Brubaker's run of Captain America. And here he is alive and well. There's no, the, As of right now, there has been no explanation of it for his resurrection. Not at all. But I'm hoping in the next arc, because I just wrapped the first arc right now, uh, they explain. Now, Sam does have a partner. He There is New Falcon. And he's, um, I think he's Hispanic. I don't have a problem with the fact there is New Falcon because why not? I mean, you can't have Bucky Barnes. You can't have New Winter Soldier or New Bucky. I think the Falcon, I think having someone named Falcon aside from Sam is a really brilliant stroke of genius. And I believe this is the character's only second appearance he's made because he should first show up in the previous issue. And this issue becomes his part. I love the suit too. And. I'm also looking forward to what else uh, Nick Spencer brings to the book. I mean, I mean, if he brings the style of storytelling that he's been getting, that he's been giving for the past six issues in the next arc, I'm hoping he brings more stuff from Mark Greenwald's run. And I think the reason why he did that for Serpent Society, because this year just happens to be the 75th anniversary of Captain America. But the question is, who's next? Red Skull? Crossbones? I mean, I would love to see more villains come back besides the Serpent Society. Heck, I wouldn't mind if the Secret Empire came back. In case you're wondering, that group that appears in Agent Carter, that's a Secret Empire. I didn't know that until someone pointed out to me. But yeah, really good series. Number three. Also one of my friend Edgar's favorite series to read. And this is also a, a character, main character, Tony Stark's actually his favorite superhero. The Invincible Iron Man Volume 2 by Brian Michael Bendis and David Marquez. Six issues in. It just started its second arc. And they brought back uh, War Machine. Now, this is the first time since Matt Fraction's run that he's been in the book. And here's the thing. James Charles has not been featured that much in the past four years. I mean, after Fraction's run ended, where the heck did this guy show up? Let's see, he showed up for, like, an issue of, I mean, I think he returned, I mean, as far as I know, in the past few years, I mean, all he's done is show off, like, a few issues of Captain Marvel. You have his Iron Patriot title. He, he also appeared in uh, Gambit for a couple issues as Iron Patriot. Uh, he appeared in Secret Avengers Volume 2 for about half of half the, about the volume of Nick Spencer. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, and his most recent appearance before he showed up in here was shown in the first issue of the current volume of Captain America. Not Captain America, uh, Captain Marvel. It's almost like this is one character Marvel should get more, uh, more, more panel time for him. Because this guy has not been featured that much in the past four years. It's like he makes appearances here and there. I mean, the only book you can see him appearing for a good period of time in the book is Secret Avengers. Or when he had his Iron Patriot series, which I actually didn't think was too bad. But this is one series that Marvel should have explained why they got rid of it because there was like no explanation. The book just ended the five issues. But I'm glad the fact Rhodey's back as War Machine. I never liked the fact he became Iron Patriot. As a matter of fact, I think everybody hated the fact that he became Iron Patriot. And I think it was a, I think it was brilliant that Hickman had him go back being War Machine. 
because he functions better as War Machine. No, yes, he's also an Iron Man as well, but I think he works best as War Machine, not as Iron Man, and definitely not as Iron Patriot. And this is definitely a very good recommendation to read. All right. Um, number two is the current volume for Howard the Duck. This is Howard the Duck Volume 6. And this volume is so good that I currently own the first three issues of the volume. Yeah, this is really good stuff. I mean, I know some people... I mean, Kat thought... Uh, Kat Kamakuno uh, from Comic Friendly, she thought that the series went kind of downhill after the first few issues. But in my honest opinion, I think she's wrong. Well, I don't counter her opinion. She has a right for her opinion. That's fine. I'm not like how some dicks think that, oh, my opinion is the, is the best opinion of all. I don't believe anybody has opinion. But I disagree with Kat on the part of Howard Duck, Okay. I had the right to disagree with her. Okay, I personally have never met Kat Kamakuno at all. But if she's watching this, I gotta say, Kat, basically, even though you're kind of wrong on on the quality of Howard the Duck, but I respect your opinion. And you have the right to it. Alright? And if you comment this video, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. I don't disagree with you. I do disagree with you, but I don't... I don't... I do respect your opinion. You have the right to it. Okay? You're a reviewer. I'm a reviewer. Everybody else has their own opinion. I don't think my, my my opinion is the best. I don't say that at all. I'm just saying that, in my honest opinion, the series is good. It has been good for the past eight issues. Yes, I do count the previous volume as part of it. But I don't think that the quality of storytelling has gone downhill. Not at all. But, yeah. And my number one, all right, move on from that. And my number one favorite title under all new, all different Marvel now is The Scarlet Witch. Yeah. <laughs> now, basically, now why did I put this number one? Because this is a one awesome series. Despite the fact that, like, um, Howard the Duck... It has a rotating dwarf artist. But despite that, this is one awesome series. And I have reviewed this particular issue already on my channel. You can find it under my Punisher reviews. But, yeah. This is one series I can definitely give a high recommendation for. Because it's just pure awesome. James Robinson is an awesome writer. And... You probably thinking, oh, this is like the only this is like the only other series he's writing for Marvel. So some people are not surprised at the fact it made my uh made uh I, I bet everybody is surprised that this out of all the other series made number one. Now I'm gonna set this aside here. Now why didn't series like uh why did Amazing Spider-Man make me my number one? Well, because the series has gone slightly downhill because of the current arc. It's one of my least favorite series right now. This one I think has had a really strong start with the first arc. The second arc, I just don't have any idea where the series is going to go. As for any air titles like Kenny X-Men, and Kenny X-Men, now before I end this video, I had to make some videos on some other books. Uh, basically, Kenny X-Men did make the list because of Greg Land. He, his artwork really does not work for Kenny X-Men at all. I don't know why Marvel put him back in the book. Put him on, put him on a, a Max book or something. At least a max, an original Max book would work for him, not a regular mainstream comic. Now, I get the fact he has drawn the book before. As a matter of fact, I've read every single issue he's drawn for Captain, for, for Kenny X. I, heck, I've reviewed trades that collect issues that he, that he drew. But he's good at drawing backgrounds. He's not good at drawing. Uh, his weakness is... Um, is how he draws female characters. Male characters are fine. I mean, he has obsession with uh, constant close-ups, people's faces. Um, you also have the smiling, which gets really annoying, especially when the characters are fighting. Not supposed to be smiling at all. His obsession with that is so stupid. 
And also, drawing women in sexual positions is so weird. And him tracing. He has a nickname Tracer for a reason because the guy copies constantly. The guy does not know how to draw characters properly at all. He's good at drawing backgrounds. Okay? But Marvel, if you're going to keep on the book, give him a co-artist who actually can draw characters properly. Whether they're not smiling or in women in sexual positions or being traced over constantly. Okay? That's my recommendation. For, that's my opinion about that. But I will do a least favorite um, all new all different Marvel series. All, all new all different list. I will do it eventually, but I just want to end this video now before it gets any, any longer than it already is. It's probably like I'm 25 minutes in. Um, but until then, until until you see my next video, whatever video I put up. Until then, see you there. Bye.